Hello, my name is Cody, and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about some tips for beginners just getting into the stock market. Here are seven rules I think every beginning investor should follow. Now for the not so fun part. I'm going to give a criteria for people that I think they need to do before they even start thinking about investing. Firstly, you cannot have any credit card debt. Thousands of people think they're doing themselves favors by buying mutual funds that earn 2% while having 20k in credit card debt. I've seen it firsthand and it can destroy people financially. The only kind of debt anyone should have is a mortgage or an extremely low line of credit. Secondly, anything under 10,000 goes directly into an S&P 500 index fund. I know it's not sexy suggestion by an index fund, but anything under 10,000 goes straight into that. After you have $10,000 saved up, then you can get into um, picking out your individual stocks and devising a portfolio for yourself. Okay, now we have the basics covered. I want to differentiate investing and trading. Trading is short-term speculation, whereas investing is long-term. There's nothing wrong with either. I do both. But in this video, I'm only be talking about investing, not trading. The investing philosophy I follow was created by a man named Benjamin Graham. He created modern-day value investing. Uh, in his book, The Intelligent Investor, he goes into detail. I'll put a link in the description if anyone wants to read it. Uh, it's a very famous book. I'm sure tons of you guys have, definitely. Uh, this is what Warren Buffett built his success on. So rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. If anyone follows Warren Buffett, that's a very famous uh, Warren Buffett quote. So that's why I'm giving you the first two rules, never lose money. Uh, it's easier said than done. Uh, if you think about everything in percentage, uh, losses are a lot more heavy. Um, think of every loss almost as double. Uh, to gain back a 10% loss, you need a 20% increase just to break even. Maintaining capital is one of the fundamentals you need to do while investing in the stock market. Rule three, think long-term. Everybody that gives advice, especially on the internet, likes to talk about massive short-term gains. Turn 1,000 and 10,000 into a month. The vast majority of people are not gonna short, uh, turn a small amount of money into a large sum of money very quickly. You always have to be thinking about the long-term gain potentials. Delayed gratification is one of the most important things in the stock market. You have to think 10, 20, 30, 40 plus years, depending on how old you are. If you want to plan to retire at 65, you got to think of uh, 35 years in the future. It's all up to how old you are, but you always got to think in the long, long term. Rule number four, be diversified. Diversification is the number one thing preached by all investors. Uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket is a very common phrase a lot of people use. Don't put all your money in one sector. If that sector goes down, then obviously it's going to have very bad results for your, your portfolio. Uh, you need to diversify in sectors and stocks within those sectors as well. Uh, you should diversify as much as your risk tolerance. So some people could have maybe six or seven stocks where people that are um, a little more lower risk tolerant would have uh, 10 or 15 or 20. I'm talking about very small portfolios here, obviously. If you have a million dollars, you're going to have many more stocks than just 12. But uh, younger people can take more risk because they have a lifetime to recuperate from their losses. So the older you are, a good rule of thumb is um, the little more uh, concerned or conservative you should be with your investments. Rule number five, buy what you know. Um, if you know nothing about the biopharmaceutical industry, then you have probably not the, no business buying their stock. I'm not saying that you shouldn't research biopharmaceutical companies, become versed in the industry, and know everything you can know about that company. But do you want to put in all that effort just to learn a whole new industry? Or if you're a computer programmer, do you want to learn all about these tech stocks? You gotta uh, put a little bit more, you're gonna put more effort if you're more interested in the subject. So I have here, you should have a grasp on the industry before you start investing in it. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect and know all the different kinds of, you know, drug and pharmaceutical stuff. But know your, do, do your research and know what you're going to buy. Uh, the best way to go about it, find an interesting uh, industry is the one that you work in or you have a hobby in or you just have a passion for. Be genuinely interested in it. Rule number six, and I think this might be the most important one, control your emotions. One of the biggest things to keep under control while investing is your emotions. When a stock gains or drops a significant amount, it triggers your fork highs and your fork lows. You have to be able to control your emotion in times of extreme fluctuations. When a stock drops, you gotta think to yourself, why did this happen? Did they miss their earnings? Bad publicity news? What actually happened to the company? Is it, does it have to change from your core value of what you think the company's gonna do in the long run? You have to take into consideration many things before you act rationally. The same goes for the upside. Only buy and sell when you're on a clear mind. Rule number seven, dollar cost averaging. 
It's a great tool to lower the cost of your position in stock. You buy more when the stock is low and less when the stock is high. This is a stock that you continually invest for, usually a dividend stock. A Canadian bank stock is a great example. I know I preach a lot of love for Canadian bank stock on this channel, uh, but if you're going to continually, uh, every single quarter or whenever you invest into your investment funds, buy stock um, and continue to invest in the same stock, dollar cost averaging is a great idea for that. Now, if you follow these rules, you'll have a good foundation for investing. I'm not saying you're going to turn 10K in less than 1 million, but the chances are you're going to do better than a 1% GIC. Now, I didn't go over things like bonds and options. They're also part of a good portfolio. I'm going to cover those more in a future video. A good rule of thumb is the older you are, the more bonds you should hold, uh, and options are just a whole other uh, animal to attack. Uh, but right now, sticking to equities, I feel like these core rules that give you a solid foundation to start building your knowledge on. Now, one more thing to remember, and this is why I think everyone should know something about finance, and it's something you're going to have to practice your whole life. You're always going to have to do taxes. Nobody cares about your money more than you do. That means I'm not saying the guy at the bank or the investment firm you're going to uh, is going to be wrongfully, you know, purposely maniacal and mean, uh, you know, just kill you with fees and stuff like that. I'm just saying he's not going to care as much as you are about your money. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. I make videos about business investing. Every single Friday, I upload weekly financial news as well.